Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. So I originally intended for the gaming pre-release to release sooner, but I got a little bit sick, which caused this to be delayed. Hopefully when you are watching this, the patch 4.4 is still not out and this video is still a pre-release. Anyways, it is done now, so enjoy. During the holiday season, Miss Farina is now one of my esteemed clients. Is that so? You're quite right, Miss Tao. How about we grab some dim sum from Shinya Kiosk? My treat! I have talked about the pronunciation of gaming's name a couple times already in my previous vids, but it's fine if you haven't seen them. I thought I would just clarify it that his name is actually Gaming, but I'm just gonna call him Gaming because it's a way better and funnier name and it fits his animation and stuff a lot more as well. Another thing I would like to mention before we get started is that I might talk a little more with numbers in this vid as opposed to my Xianyun pre-release mainly because gaming is a carry so the numbers are the primary metric of his power level. Now let's start by looking at his kit. First off, gaming has the highest base attack out of any 4 star and by a long shot. It is at 302 which is even higher than some 5 star characters. And he ascends with attack percent as well. Plus, he wants to, he really, really wants to be played with Bennett in the team. So naturally, gaming will tend to have an abundance of attack, which is something worth keeping in mind for the later sections. His normal attack talent now looks kind of cool. It has a four hit combo. And even though at a baseline, it really doesn't do anything. It is a somewhat important part of his kit. The scalings on these normal attacks are also decent because gaming is a clay mode user and why this is important or somewhat important you will see later his elemental scale is called b shell ascent when you use it gaming will pounce forward a short distance and if you hit an enemy or even a surface then gaming will leap into the air and allow you to perform a special plunge attack called charmed cloud strider the skill also consumes 15% of gaming's max HP after plunging. However, his HP cannot be reduced below 10% with this method. Now, this special plunge is pyro damage that cannot be overridden. And the scaling is pretty high at 391.7% of gaming's attack at talent level 9. And the skill has a 6 second cooldown at baseline, right? Now, his elemental burst summons Manshai. I'm really sorry if I mispronounce it, but that's how I believe it should be pronounced. I don't know anything about this, right? So Manshai will deal AoE Pyro damage equal to 629.7% of gaming's attack at talent level 9. And when the burst is activated, gaming also heals by 30% of his max HP and he then enters Wushou stance. When gaming enters Wushou stance, he will gain an increased resistance to interruption. But I will warn you, do not count on that too much because it's the same as Hu Tao and Sino. And if you've ever played them, you know how good the stagger resistance is, right? <laughs> Anyways, the Manshai will deal its damage like I mentioned, then it will link up with gaming. And when it does, he will reset gaming's elemental skill cooldown. And throughout the duration of Yusu stands, every time gaming does his special plunge charmed cloud strider from his skill while being above 50% HP, Manshai will be summoned again, it will not deal damage in the following instances, but it will just fall nearby and then link up with gaming again to again reset the skill cooldown. The Wusho stance lasts for 12 seconds and the burst has a 15 second cooldown with 60 energy cost. On to his passive talents. His A1 passive heals him for 1.5% of his max HP every 0.2 seconds for 0.8 seconds. So this makes it so that gaming loses 15% HP when he does plunge and this talent heals him back up by 6% of his max HP. So he is indeed HP negative overall but it really doesn't matter that much cause you want to pair him up with Bennett anyways and then he also wants to be played with Xianyun so yeah. It doesn't really matter that much, you will be able to keep him above 50% HP at all times. His A4 passive gives him 20% incoming healing bonus if his HP falls below 50% and provides 20% damage bonus to the special plunge charmed cloud strider if his HP is above 50%. His last passive is just 10% movement speed buff during the day. Now let's also discuss his constellations. I skipped the constellations part in the Xianyun pre-release because I usually do not look at 
five star constellations but gaming is a four star so yeah let's see his c1 makes it so whenever mansha links up with gaming it will heal him for 15 percent of his max hp now this constellation makes gaming able to self-sustain himself and overall net hp positive which does matter because his c2 increases his attack by 20 percent for five seconds if gaming receives overflow healing this will have 100% of time because every time he plunges down he will lose HP and then Mancha will come back and heal him and his talent will also heal him so yeah you are going to have pretty much 100% of time on his C2. His C3 is skill levels which is pretty good because his special plunge Charmed Cloud Strider scales in his skill even though it is considered plunge damage and it is really the major part of his overall damage output so yeah it's a nice consolation. His C4 restores 2 energy whenever gaming hits opponents with the special plunge attack which is not insignificant because he does have some ER requirements. His C5 is burst level, kinda whatever, it's better for screenshot damage I guess but even then it's not really that big of a deal. And then his C6 is pretty damn good, it gives him 20% crit rate and 40% crit damage to his special plunge the Charmed Cloud Strider. It is a very very strong constellation needless to say. Next up gaming's artifact options. His best set is undoubtedly going to be Mare Shose Hunter mainly because he just manipulates his HP a lot and he can pretty much instantly stack it fully. His other good options are Crimson Witch, 4th piece Gilded Dreams and Vermilion. Now Vermilion is a kind of a weird case because even though the amount of stats it gives is about the same as Mare Chausse, the attack is just a lot less valuable mainly because he already has an abundance of attack like I mentioned previously and then if you are playing him with Xian Yun who is a pretty good synergistic teammate for him then the attack buff just doesn't do anything to increase Xian Yun's portion of the damage. So you always want to have damage percent or crit or EM which are all things that can multiply with your gaming plus your Xianyun's additive damage as buff as well. Of course there are some artifact options that technically work but I mean I would really recommend you just steer clear of them just stay away from them they are 4 piece desert pavilion chronicle do I even have to explain this one it is not worth it because the 2 piece is just very useless and having to charge attack for the 4 piece is very scuffed and then the attack speed is pretty useless as well so yeah shimanawa because no do not do this to yourself you deserve better and the next one lava walker obviously avoid unless you are playing mono pyro but even then vermilion and mare Shose are just better options and now we have a little more interesting part which is gaming's weapon options he is in sort of a similar boat as Diluc in this regard because there's just really a lack of good claymores. His best option is also, to no one's surprise, R5 Serpent Spine with the 5 star stat stakes like Redhorn, Wolf's Greystone, etc. just being slightly behind. Overall, you don't have to worry too much about the weapons to be honest because all of his options don't differ that much in performance. The claymores just don't have a very good selection of weapon options, right? But before we move forward, I would like to mention something in regards to the Bacon and the Sacrificial Greatsword. We know that the skill needs to deal damage because the Sac Weapons passive does not work against Abyss Mages or Abyss Heralds. Even though you are hitting them, you are not dealing damage. A number does not show up on your screen and they just do not proc. So I believe the Sac Greatsword is not going to work on gaming at all. And which leads me into the bacon as well because there's ambiguity here regarding the bacon's passive as well because it needs you to quote unquote hit enemies with your elemental skill. So with all that jibber jabber out of the way let's continue with his weapon options. Naturally attack claimers will be less valuable for him because he already has an abundance of attack and they won't help in increasing the Xianyun's part of the damage equation and even if you do not play him with Xianyun most of gaming's damage is from hits that can whip and melt so the attack loses a little more value there as well. Because of this his best 4 star options excluding of course Serpent Spine are going to be R5 Rain Slasher and R5 Mailed Flower. Both of which are about as good generally and sometimes even better slightly than the Wolf's Greystone. 
the 4.3 event weapon ultimate overlords mega magic sword is also a decent option because it gives you about the kind of er you would want to build on him and gives you 48 percent attack with a high base attack pretty decent option overall the font in craftable tidal shadow is essentially the four star wolf's gray stone it just gives you attack and attack and a shit ton of attack lithic blade is not that great to be honest at low refinements a little go but above r3 it's a pretty decent option that will be about it for the weapons if i skipped some then that's because either they don't synergize with him or that a better option is available again don't worry too much about his weapons you will see in the later segments that it's the least of your worries <laughs> if you have other stuff that he wants then you can destroy shit even with a fab anyways now let's move on to his playstyle he really really wants c6 bennett i would even say that c6 bennett is better for him than his own c6 is but obviously some people still do not want to c6 their bennett just know that it is a big deal for gaming his playstyle without c6 bennett will be just plunging and dashing towards your man shy to reset your skill cooldown faster so you can do an extra plunge and yeah there's not really much else you can do with c6 bennett you would wanna use his normal attacks whenever your skill is on cooldown it's a decent amount of extra damage because him being a claymore user means that his normal attacks tend to have a decent scaling and then if they are pyro attacks so yeah some of them will be able to vape as well which is pretty good with c6 bennett and shianin in the team you do the same thing except that you can also do a normal plunge while your skill is on cooldown because of shianin because your high plunge vape plus the bonk plunge damage is not that far behind of your special plunge it's a pretty good damage however it is about 10 to 15 percent worse and you only get eight instances of buff from shianyun so don't just use them all on the normal plunge and the bonus from gaming c sig will also not apply to the normal plunges which will significantly widen this gap a safe assumption would be getting five of the special cloud strider whatever plunges and then you can do three of the normal plunges in between and for the remainder of your rotation just mash your normal attack buttons or dash towards manshai whichever you want now let's get into his team options obviously you can always just do burgi and moro pyro or maybe some other unconventional meme teams as well However, I will be focusing on Vape and Melt, where you play him as a carry, which is his intended role. His best team undoubtedly will be Bennett, Xianyun, and Furina. Bennett is just Bennett, Furina is your Hydro, who gives a lot of damage bonus, because Xianyun has pretty good healing. Gaming also manipulates his HP, and honestly, this might actually be one of the teams that can potentially max out your 300 fanfare at C0. And then you also have the plunge buff from Xianyun, so this is just going to be his best team overall, and the team most of the people will default to when they are going to play gaming. Now, of course, if you are an AOE content, then you can replace Xianyun with Kazuha. The performance of the team overall won't differ that much in terms of damage. But you get crowd control from Kazuha and overall it's going to be the best AOT for gaming. Now let's also look at some other options. If you're not gonna have Xianyu then obviously you can use the Kazuha variant in single target scenario as well. The numbers would just get a lot lower. With C6 Venet, you can also just play him in kind of wave teams you play Diluc in. So with Yelana and Singcho, you will just weave in normal attacks and use your special plunge from your elemental skill whenever it's available. Pretty straightforward for the wave stuff. You can also play gaming in Melt, but I will mention that I'm not too sure if you will be able to upkeep the Cryo Aura with Xianyun in the party if you decide to do normal plunges in between as well. It should go pretty smoothly if you have Sikros or Kazuha as the annual option in the team though because they can inf just infuse their burst with Cryo. For the Cryo options, the first option that comes to mind is Kea or Rosaria. However, unlike Shangling's Pyronado, Kea's burst does not stay on the ground when your character jumps so you will not be hitting most enemies when you are airborne. I do not recommend him. Rosaria is a very fine option though, alongside Ganyu as well, and if you do not have Bennett C6, then you can use Chongyun's infusion to apply Cryo with gaming's normal attacks, then melt your special plunge. 
ऑल दो दीज आर ऑफेंसिव ऑप्शन देर इज समथिंग दैट स्टिल एम्बिगुअस एंड विल लाइकली रिमेन दैट वे एंटिल आई गेट टू टेस्ट टेस्ट गेमिंग वॉट द फक इज टेस्ट अंटिल आई गेट टू टेस्ट गेमिंग माई सेल्फ ऑन रिलीज इट इज द फैक्ट दैट देर माइट बी अ पॉसिबिलिटी फॉर हिम टू यूज इज ई बट गेट स्टैग आउट ऑफ इट वाइल ही इज पाउंसिंग टूवर्ड्स द एनिमी which might result in your e going on cooldown but not actually hitting and therefore giving you the empowered plunge and like i said in this kit section his interruption resistance is the same in his burst as hu tao in her skill and sino in his burst so you can probably understand just how many kinds of attacks can knock you around so if this turns out to be the case then i expect leila to be the best cry option for his melt teams because she buffs normal attacks at c4 which is not negligible she gives you a strong shield and her cryo application should synergize pretty well with gaming due to him using his skills more than other units and therefore helping leila star mechanic plus gaming teams will incline towards having a bit of er issues so leila just having a 40 burst cost is pretty nice Well that will be about it for the main team variations you want to play with him. Now on to his power level and how good of a four star he is. So I'll get this out of the way first. I expect the community and the usual content creators to have a more inflated perception of his strength. Keep that in mind when he releases more often than not you might see creators slightly overestimating his capabilities. and obviously there will be a small percentage that will just say oh he is broken he is the on field shangling to which i'll say now even though i have not tested him him he is no shangling i can tell you that much however he is a pretty good unit overall he will be competing with noel as the best four star carry his overall strength is also similar to noel now what do i mean by that well picture this you are playing carry noel but your noel is low constellation your goro is also low con and what heck you don't even have goro right <laughs> and then you don't have furina then she really sucks if i'm being honest with you <laughs> and similarly low constellation gaming with low constellation benet no shianyu no furina then his output is also very rough however much like c6 noel with c6 goro and furina is a pretty damn good team Gaming is also impressive when you get his stuff. To put things into perspective, at an average, 25 useful rolls out of which 20 are crit rolls. On Marisho, say without any of his supporting party members present, you are looking at a measly 25k to 30k DPS. And I'm being a little generous with that 30k, to be honest. But when you get when at C6, Fuina, Shianyu, and even gaming at C6. then you are easily looking at upwards of 70k even 75k dps which is pretty damn good almost crazy for a four star uh, i mean not counting shangling it's almost triple the baseline output so yeah don't listen to all the people around you at release or the content creators because his strength varies so much depending on your account judge based on what you have now don't get discouraged if you want to play him if you're not interested in shianyun Because really, the only thing you truly need for him to feel decent to play is Bennett C6, and he's an old character who is also available in the shop, so it should not be that much of an issue to be honest. And outside of Abyss Floor 12, you really do not need that much damage anyways, so just enjoy the gameplay because his animations are just chef's kiss, and he just looks so fun to play. The Dilu main in me is so excited for this game to release. I even have farm to triple crown him already. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to watch his various teams and actions and how well he turns out to be, then I will make a video after his release as well. So, like and subscribe. See you next time. Cheer on the beat.